Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your reading for 2024. This is for Gemini and Gemini Rising. And if you're new to my channel, I do a traditional cult of Christ spread. I also use astrology and my guides to help bring a lot more clarity to get more specific and detailed with your reading. Gemini, I do this because you know I love you. I want you to feel like it's a personal reading as if we're here one-on-one -on -one, rather than a general spread. Lastly, I use astrology because it offers a lot more depth to your reading. And you know I'm going to use a lot of astrology here because Gemini, oh my goodness, you have waited 12 years for 2024, and I'm going to tell you why, and it's going to be the best year that you've had, 2024 to 2025, be the best year that you've had since 2012, okay? And we're, we're going to talk about this, but before we even do, I think that my uh, dog wants to join me, so let's bring her up, and uh, Ruby, you want to come up here? You good? Okay, she's good. She's good. So uh, what's happening this year uh, for 2024? It is a great year. I really love 2024. There's some uh, really nice eclipses. There are some really great full moons, new moons, and it is conjunctions galore. Now, in astrology conjunctions, the easiest way to explain it is they are the highest degree of like us vicious aspects okay so uh just think of like planets like fist bumping kissing hugging what you know just the, the, all of the above in the sky and so they're very very nice and we have some powerful ones we have one that we haven't seen in 13 years this when i say 2024 is going to be a big year it's going to be a big year um it's going to be a big year of milestones as well and for you gemini i'm just going to tell you right right away jupiter is moving into your sign i know i've been saying this for a long time and i I've been very excited for y'all because you're coming to the complete cycle of the Zodiac wheel. You know, right now you're still in, you know, the 12th house, right? So Jupiter, sorry, Jupiter and Taurus are in, uh, I'm sorry, Jupiter and Uranus are in Taurus, which are uh, your 12th house. And you always want to track Jupiter, the planet of good fortune, good luck, prosperity. So the best way to see it is like you've been in your head a lot. <laughs> you've been in your head a lot. And uh, there were some really strong retrogrades in 2023. Uh, there were some uh, a big frustrating moments for Gemini's. Uh, there could have been a sense of like quicksand energy, like you couldn't move forward. But again, a lot of self-sabotage energy because that lives in the 12th house. Uh, you know, it reminds me of a friend who is a Gemini. And for most of the year, uh, uh, 20, and I just got off the phone with her yesterday too, a lot of her like trying to get a new job uh but then she would text and say i don't think i can get this i'm not gonna get this so a lot of that like happening with gemini's because it saturn moved into pisces in your 10th house of career and so career was it may have been a, a, a challenge for you in 2023 oh you have no idea and Actually, a lot of things are changing for you now, so if, if you are watching this in December. And so uh, you're going to be great because Jupiter, the planet of good for fortune, good luck, prosperity, is leaving your 12th house in May, moving into your sign in your first house. So out of all the zodiac signs, you out of all of them are going to have the best, luckiest year that you've had since 2020, since 2012. 2013 okay because remember it takes 12 years for jupiter to make a complete circle back to where it was and so it's not just 2024 we're talking moving from may 2024 to may 2025 and then if you if you want to go a little bit deeper than that Jupiter's then moving into your money house. So you see how you're coming to the end of the cycle. You're moving into the best year that you've had in 12 years, but also you're going to make the most money than you have uh, starting in 2025. So it's it's really, but again, because it is your emerald year, your celestial year for 2024, you could make, I mean, go, uh, I, right? That if, if, if kids still do that these days. Now, 2024, I've been explaining, is kind of like the middle child of 2023 and 2025. It's very interesting. You know, the middle child does things on their own, but they, you know, learn things on their own. They're a little bit, you know, they, they take charge. They're a little bit more ambitious because they're the ones that, you know, people forget. And so that's the other, other reason is that, uh, uh, 2024 is like the middle child because they can get away with a lot more. And so it's really, really,
really a great year to take charge. And you're going to be able to, because uh, once Uranus goes direct in uh, January right away, you have no planets retrograde, okay? And so it is a really great year. Um, a lot of things that happen in 2024, by the way, will really determine where you're at in 2025. So you really do have to take a lot of action, um, but you will have a lot of luck, all right? And so... I can't really say that the same thing for 2023 because some of the bigger aspects that we've seen are happening in 2024. So you see 2024 is a very critical year for Gemini's. Again, I'm very, very excited for you. I'm excited for myself too. As If you're a subscriber, you, uh, you may know that I'm a Gemini rising. So this affects both Gemini's and Gemini risings, everything that's going to happen. Now, I'm going to go, this is what I'm going to do for this annual forecast. I'm going to do, first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the key, the main thing that's happening every month for 2024, and then I'm going to do your spread, and then we're going to break it down by quarter, okay, by season, uh, because there is a lot happening. There's there there's there's so much happening. Really big focus on career and your passions too. By the way, uh, with Saturn moving into Pisces, you'll feel a lot more responsibility. But it's almost like whistle while you work energy. Like a lot of y'all are going to be ascending. Uh, but again, remember Jupiter is going to be in your first house. That's like your identity, the role that you play, like everything, everything, everything. So let's go ahead and get started. The first uh, thing that's going to happen um, is January, Pluto moving into Aquarius. Now, I'm going to do a separate video on this. This is one of the biggest aspects of the century. All right. Pluto hasn't been in Aquarius since uh, for 250 years. And so we are living through Pluto in Aquarius, which not all of humanity can say that. Pluto in Aquarius is significant. Again, I'll make I'll make a separate video, but you will start feeling all of that power. You're going to start feeling that. Uh, Pluto in Aquarius is your ninth house of spirituality. You're going to feel a lot more, uh, you know, intuitive. You're going to tap into your intuitive side. Uh, Geminis are like thinkers, right? You're the creative. So there's going to be a nice blend of both. Even your, you know, philosophies could change on a lot of things. Ninth house is also uh, long distance travel. It's also publishing. Hey, if you're writing a book, Gemini's are great writers. There you go. Okay, there you go. So I really love that for you. Um, another thing that's happening is, uh, sorry, I know I have to put on my glasses because it's like I have pages of notes here. Okay, so, um, or screens of notes. Now, so that's the big thing. Um, it, it's going to be very interesting because Pluto and Aquarius does affect humanity at large. And uh, it's just something that we'll, we'll, we get to experience together. Um, and... Aquarius is all about humanity. And so again, I'll talk about it later. If you I I did leave um uh on my Instagram if 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 you follow me or whatever, I I pinned at the top. I have like a little reel on Pluto and Aquarius and see how it and I talk about what's happened throughout history with Pluto and Aquarius. Now, February, I love it. Both Mars and Venus conjuncting Pluto and Aquarius. Come on. That's going to be major for y'all. Again, this is a lot of spirituality, belief system, even education. Some of y'all could be learning new things, going back to school, maybe graduating school. There could be something there. Now, March, we have a lunar eclipse in Libra. Okay. We have a lunar e eclipse in Libra. So there is still something. It's like you letting something go because remember the south node moved into libra in july and so uh fifth house that is all about pleasure love romance creativity self-expression so it could be something where you're just like it's like a purging of something because there are uh sometimes you got to make room for all these new things to come through uh so that one is happening uh and then we have the solar eclipse in aries uh that's gonna happen uh in april okay so april solar eclipse in aries not only is that happening, and again, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this in 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 big detail because this solar eclipse in Aries is huge. And two things about this: one, it's in your eleventh house of your hopes and wishes. I, I'm not even joking, Gemini. Like we haven't even gotten to Jupiter in your sign, so 
keep that in mind. Second thing, it's a total eclipse. The last time we had one in, uh, if you live in the US, Canada, the last time we had one, I think it was like 2016, 2017. So I really highly encourage you to go out there into the path of the eclipse because we're not going to have it for, for, for another, you know, for a while. All right. So, uh, it's when you get your glass, the eclipse glasses and look, it's just such a rare phenomenon. I remember going to, uh, Tennessee, Tennessee for the last one. Uh, we flew out there. It was, it was amazing. It lasts like two minutes, but it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, now in April, we have Jupiter Uranus conjuncting in Taurus. Now this is arguably, some may say the best day of the year. Some may say the best day of the past five years. Some may say of the decade. This is the aspect that only happens every 13 years. This is the biggest aspect of, of, of 2024. This is going to be huge. Um, now, another thing that's happening is May. So April and May, by the way, are the two biggest months. Your life is going to change around this time. But for y'all actually seeing what's happening for you, you may actually start feeling it now. Um, but in May, that's, oh, I love May because the sun and Venus conjuncting Uranus and Taurus. So again, this is all 12th house stuff for you. When I say 12th house, that is your subconscious. It is like facing a lot of fears, unrooting a lot of things, but it's also like hidden things. So a lot of things happening behind the scenes that you may not know about. You may not know about. It's so funny because it's like, you know, at my uh, full-time job, you know, I hire a lot of people uh, and whatnot. And it's so funny because there's, you know, there's always that one top candidate and, and, and I'm with like other, you know, people that are pivotal in, in hiring this person, discussing that person. So that's kind of like if this candidate has, you know, uh, all this activity in the 12th house, we're the ones that's behind the scenes. Like, yeah, do, does that make sense to you? I'm not going to, I know I talked to way too much, so I'm going to keep going. Um, and then May Jupiter enters your sign. Oh my goodness. And I'm going to give you the dates later when, when I do your spread. Okay. This is, you know, it just for you again this is jupiter the planet of good luck prosperity wisdom profit expansion moving into your house okay wisdom moving into gemini for an entire year so this is from may 2024 to may 2025 you're gonna have the most luck and you're just gonna feel absolutely amazing now what's also great about uh, May is that we have the sun conjunct Jupiter. And so again, the sun and the Jupiter conjunction, absolutely amazing. It only happens maybe twice a year. This year, we're only having it once and it, it's going to be in May. All right. So as you can see, May is just, ah, oh, so nice. Now, June, what I love about this, Jupiter trining Pluto. Now, what does this mean for you? Jupiter obviously is in your sign at this time. And Pluto is, you know, all about power and, and wealth. And so this is the best and biggest money day of the year. Okay. So, uh, month of the, I mean, again, I'm going to tell you the date, uh, as I go th uh, through it and I do leave all the, uh, I'm going to see if I actually, I haven't even checked, but I'm going to try to leave all the key dates in the description box, uh, for you to follow. Now in July, we have Mars conjunct Uranus. That's going to be an absolutely big thing. Uh, we'll talk about later August. Uh, one of my favorite new moons of the year is happening in Leo. This is actually one of the greatest new moons. And for you, Gemini, this new moon in Leo is going to be in your third house. And you are the native ruler of the third house. So there is going to be something really compelling uh, in terms of communication. Uh, you could be on, uh, you know, uh, become like a big leader at this point. A lot of people looking up to you, you being inspiring. And then also the fact uh, third house is also research and writing. So, yeah, a lot of y'all could be thinking about writing books or starting websites or a blog or being more active on uh, uh, you know, maybe even social media, considering, you know, your North Node moved into the 11th house, which is, you know, hopes and wishes, but it also does rule like your network, your, you know, social, it's a social house, right? So your friends and uh, even groups you belong to, organizations you belong to, and uh, it's, it's, it is 
uh, going to be there all year. Uh, where are we now? September, uh, we have a lunar eclipse in Pisces. This is very interesting, right? This is going to be very interesting. So we've completely left the Scorpio Taurus axis, you know, those eclipses and those fixed signs. Now, this one is uh, really, really going to have a big impact on your career. If you're not here for career, fame. Um, public recognition, how you want to be perceived by the public, leadership, your social status. This one's going to be big for you. And then October, we have that solar eclipse in Libra. So you see we have two eclipses in Libra. Um, again, that is your fifth house of love, pleasure, romance, creativity, self-expression, procreation too. Okay, so that could be a big thing for you. Um, now, uh, when we get to October, November, this is like when we approach retrograde season. So a lot of the outer planets are going to start retrograding. But in uh, November, I love that the sun trines both um, Saturn and Mars. We'll talk about that. And then uh, in December, we have a great full moon in year sign. So with that said, uh, uh, there, of course, there's going to be challenging aspects throughout the year. Like there's never, you know, this is life, right? I say, you know, I always say it, life isn't a Disney movie. Challenges all the time, but challenges make you stronger, make you wiser when you, you know, it, it depends on you handle the challenges. So we do have like, you know, a couple Jupiter, Saturn squares, and then, you know, Mars and Saturn squaring uh, uh, full moons that I'm going to mention that I want you to watch out for. Uh, and then in December, at the end of December, or, you know, it, I think it's December 7th, actually, but Mars is going to go retrograde. So uh, that's going to be interesting, but don't even worry about that now. That's happening at the end of end of the year, so a year from now, all right? So as you can see, the uh, you know, when you break everything down, the first half of 2024 is going to be significantly better than 2025, and especially because, you know, uh, a lot of planets are going to be, uh, sorry, better than the first half of the first six months of 2024 are going to be better than the last six months. Okay. Because all these great auspicious aspects are happening in the first six months. Um, now the reason why I do keep bringing up 2025 is because it is quite possibly one of the biggest years of the decade. Okay. Um, Venus will retrograde again while Mercury is retrograde. Uh, we'll have Mars retrograde, but uh, we have nodal shifts that are happening. Uh, now, the North Node and the South Node, which uh, I'll talk about more, are moving into Pisces and Virgo. They're leaving, leaving uh, Libra and Aries. So this is going to be uh, very interesting uh, for you because this is going to be a lot of emphasis on career and home and home matters, okay? Uh, and then the biggest thing of all, the absolutely biggest thing of 2025, the reason why it's such a game-changing year, Neptune, after, you know, uh, for, uh, after Neptune is moving into Aries. So Neptune's been in Aries since 2011. So after 13 years, there you go. Okay, there you go. 14 years. I can't do my mouth. Neptune's moving into Aries. So Neptune is moving into sign the same year, 2025. Saturn is moving into Aries. So we have all this shift into Aries again your 11th house of your hopes and wishes, your 11th house of your social network. Um, and then uh, Uranus is leaving Taurus after being in Taurus since 2018 into your sign, Gemini, your sign, your sign. And then we have Jupiter leaving your sign in 2025, moving into Cancer, where it's exalted. So you see all the outer planets, because Pluto's already moved into Aquarius, all the outer planets are changing. So... Big, big year, but we are here for 2024. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what's going on for you. So again, I'm going to do a spread for the year. Then I'm going to break it down afterward seasonally. Pull a lot more cards, okay? Uh, pull a lot more cards, uh, break it down. And when I say seasonally, it's going to be like January, February, March, and then I'll, I'll move on to the next set, okay? And I'm going to tell you the dates and all the dates I want you to uh, prepare for that are going to be absolutely amazing for you and the ones that are, you know, to watch out for as well. So with that said, Gemini, let's get started. If you want to read for your moon and your Venus, uh, you're absolutely uh, welcome to, but uh, this is definitely for, uh, even for like your friends and family. I, you know, a lot of people are leaving comments. I love that, that you watch um, a sign for like family members or or whatnot. Um, but anyway, so, uh, or pass them along. But anyway, let's get started, Gemini. See what's going on for you uh, for 20 24. So, Gemini, like I said earlier, I do a traditional color grass red, and I'm going to talk fast. As you know, this is definitely going to be 
um, a long reading because I, I'm, I'm doing a little bit more than others out there. I'm, I really want to give you these key dates because it really is going to help guide you. And it's really going to be, you know, I'm hoping that it inspires you. I'm hoping that it empowers you. I'm hoping that you just feel good moving into 2024 because Jupiter is going to be in your sign um, and you're going to be good. You're going to be absolutely good. Uh, this is going to be a great year for you. So let's get started. You got the nine of pentacles. Love it. Love it. So, you know, I'm already getting the impression that, you know, like I said, even with what's happening astrologically, a lot of y'all are moving into this sense of like, things are feeling really good. Things are finally, uh, you can sense it. You can sense it. You're just like, what? Like, and you will feel a lot more of it, uh, especially uh, as it, with uh, starting in January. January, by the way, we kick it off with a bang. Okay. As opposed to uh, 2023, as opposed to 2022, it was just kind of like, eh, no, this January, boom, let's go. And then there you go. All this abundance, all this abundance. All right. So you can see this is a lot of like uh, is, is self-sufficiency energy in this card. And like I said, that's what 2024 is going to feel like for you, for you especially too. Uh, remember, 2024 is the middle child of 2023 and 2025. But you can see the symbol of Venus all over her gown, right? So a lot of love. A lot of money, a lot of passion, but again, it's that it's like she worked her way here, all right, to be in this royal court, to have uh, the falcon on her hand, right? Like who that does that? Like only the people in the royal court. And I mean, if you want to go a little deeper, that really that falcon really is Horus. If you're into like Egyptology or whatnot, so a lot of enlightenment here too. But you see all these pentacles. You see how big her harvest is. And so again, you are moving into this place where it's more about this independence, this freeness, like you feeling free. That's the energy that I'm getting. But uh, I really love that for you. And a lot of y'all. It may resonate with home, okay? It may resonate at home because this card is attributed to Venus in Virgo, which happens to be, like I said, your fourth house, so your domestic sector, home, um, family, children, but also like your, you know, partner, your significant other. But there could be some like ah things that, that uh, good now in that area uh, through 2024, and then we go straight to the Queen of Wands in the heart of your spread. Who are you, Gemini? I know who you are, and you're having a great year, 2024. There you go. And there's your uh, affirmation. Queen of Wands, the the queen who is the most charismatic, the most, you know, uh, uh, popular queen, the one that everyone listens to. But she's the one, like, I say it all the time. Like, think of, like, I don't know, Angelina Jolie, right? Gemini, walking into the room. She can get whatever she wants, like the Queen of Wands. So she has that, like, uncanny ability to, like, attract the things that she wants you also see the black cat here i actually love the fact that the black cat is showing up too speaking of uh egyptology uh you even see the pyramids in the background here um think about that time cats were worshipped <laughs> you're sitting in this throne with a lot of power with a sunflower in your hand with even like you see the sunflowers in her throne so these sunflowers are in the actual sun card, but they also represent the sun, which is like vitality and growth and prosperity and abundance. You're good. You're going to be getting a lot of things that you want, like the Queen of Wands through 2024. This is absolutely amazing. Now, also, for the first half up until May, remember that I said Jupiter and Uranus are going to be in Taurus in your 12th house still, right? So, the black hat also kind of like represents your shadow side, your shadow self. But there is a sense of you like, again, with the eclipses, with like this, a lot of purging, a lot of like shadow work, you really getting to a point where you're comfortable without, uh, you know, intuitively as well, where you don't have to like doubt yourself, where you are, uh, you just feel confident. She oozes confidence. I really, really absolutely love this for you. Um, a lot of sexual energy I'm picking up on if you're here for love and um, sex. It'll be a great year. Okay. Uh, well, let me just keep going. Page of Swords in your challenge area. Okay. So the one thing is that there may be a sense of uh, two things here, two messages. One, there could be a sense of uh, you being, uh, because things are just going really well for you, but there's so much intense aspects happening in the first half of the year especially there's going to be a lot in the last half of the year as well but uh there could be a sense of you just like 
going over the top. It's almost like there's going to be a, a point where you're going to have to pull back a bit if you feel that you're doing that. Uh, like your mind is just going to be like, whoosh, like uh, Roadrunner. OK, so there could be a sense of like, let's pull back a little bit. All right. Because there are swords are the mental suit. And this is a page. And this page is very enthusiastic. He's so ready to go. I say it all the time. Like think about like if you just did like a 20, you know, mile hike with your buddies, with your friends, with your squad, your girls get away, whatever it is, whatever it is, there's and, and y'all decide unanimously like, hey, let's take a, a, a 10 minute break. You know, eat our power bars, have a little bit of water, and, and then we'll continue our hike. There's that one person, that one person two minutes into your, you know, rest period who's like, all right, guys, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We got to go. No more. I'm, I don't like sitting around anymore. So there is that like some you can be like enthusiastic to a point. OK, so but again, this is not a bad thing. You're getting a lot of things. Um, you did get the five of uh, cups in your crown. So I'm actually glad that the five of cups did show up in your crown because there is going to be some testing moments for Gemini, especially when you do have all this activity in your 12th house, which is the subconscious and what is the subconscious. It's, you know, where we store our memories. So again, that is showing up here in your crown. There are some things you're going to have to let go. There are some things you're going to be thinking about, too. You're going to have to let go. There are things that you want to is a big message that's coming through. Uh, and you will have the uh, confidence to uh, in 2024. And so you can see this person is looking the figure down at the spilled cups. Two full cups right, be right behind that person. All they got to do is pick up the cups, cross the bridge, go home in their nice little home. Turn on um curb your enthusiasm, do a binge, you know, do whatever you do, whatever you do, open a battle of wine, have some fun, have some fun. Okay. Just don't let the past dictate your present. Don't let the past dictate your future. So this is going to be a lot of, you know, this year, there's going to be a lot of, uh, of work with that. Again, with the nodes, with the eclipses, there is going to be some moments where uh, it's time to, to recognize you're moving into this wonderful amazing again you just came through this huge 12 year completion right uh so accepting all this newness that's coming through so you, you do not want to dwell on like things from the past or hold on to things from the past because uh you know uh sometimes it's it, it, it's it's the past that um you know i say it all the time like the past and the in and in history are two separate things sometimes you have to make that sacrifice to make that past your past history all right so, so especially those things that are like self-sabotage or feeling that you're not good enough about something time to let that mindset go but it can resonate with with uh things that are going to be a little bit emotional for you because you did get the king of cups and i'm glad that you get the king of cups because with the five of cups in your crown king of cups in the heart of, or in the root of your spread now you're going to be fine you're going to be fine because as long as you put you you do that shift right that shift into not only receptive mode but you know your energy at a higher level vibrating at a higher frequency you're going to be absolutely fine you're going to be absolutely fine um, who am I? You can see the King of Cups, actually. You see his throne on top of water? There you go. Look how turbulent the water is. I mean, nothing is going to knock him off that throne. So throughout 2024, there's going to be the sense of like this emotional stability that you have more of like a feeling that you're going to be the rock for a lot of people. Um, so that's really nice. The King of Cups is the most like, you know, loving king. He has this, um, you know, he leads with his heart. He has so much love to give and a lot lot of self-love all right so keep that in mind and it could be a very um it can be uh tied to just you know your everyday activities um the other thing is just looking at what's going on here you could also have uh again that intuitive energy is coming up so really recognize that and be open to it be open to like being you know trusting your gut more than your because you know you know you uh, having that balance right is the biggest thing mind body spirit all right so because gemini's tend to be in their heads a lot uh you are so like come on you're the creatives like i said like you, you okay so I, i'll keep going um the chariot in your future there you go boom so there is a sense of just moving 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 leaving any challenges behind but then also 
balancing all those dualities in your life as the charioteer does here. All right. You see those two sphinxes going opposite directions. Um, it doesn't even matter which way they go because you're going to be in charge. All right. So it really is that willpower, having that willpower. It seems like you're going to have it in terms of your dreams and your passions and the things that you want. And again, letting those things go. Remember, he's moving forward from any obstacles and any challenges. And again, there is going to be this sense of you learning a lot as you grow, like on your spiritual journey, on your personal journey, um, especially with a chariot in your future. I mean, that's huge because you see that he's holding the magician's baton in one hand, right? For the magician card, card one. You see the slivers of the moon on his shoulders, right? From the high priestess, card two. So it's like throughout the, the fool's journey, right? We're at card seven now. He's learning everything and adapting and Gemini's y'all are like the adapting, you know, they're very you're mutable size. So a lot of adapting and it could be leading toward money if that's some, what something that you're looking for. Um looking at what's happening here, okay? Um, especially when you look across your cross, which I love all this like is speaking of Egyptology, remember the falcon representing Horus the pyramids, the black hat, and now you have the two sphinxes here across your cross. Oh, that's really cool. I love that. Um, but you're good. You're fine. You're good. Uh, it, it, it's Yeah, this is going to be a big year of like learning uh, things as you go toward your hopes and wishes. And you even see the stars in his in the chair. Like, come on, this is like a big thing. And as I mentioned, the North Node, your destiny, your true calling, moved into your 11th house of your hopes and wishes. So, Gemini, let's get to your stuff. Um, Gemini, if you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Let me know what you are looking forward to for 2024. It's going to be a year. I'm going to have to do a time check to... Okay, oh gosh, okay. Let's do this. Oh, you're, wow, you are good. Okay, yep, yep, you're good. Um, whew. Let's get started. <laughs> you got the eight of cups you and all these cups um yeah so it looks like um again it looks like you 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 may be well your life is changing i did that's a like and you can hold me to that you're gonna see yourself in a, a different uh your life is gonna be very different in 2024 um now eight of cups what did i say let that go it looks like you're going to Whatever it is, you see the man here in the red cape and the red boots representing passion and power and that just will to, to move forward from things that he knows, like things are better for me. I, like I, I whatever this this circumstances that you're in, you'll know things are better for you. And again, I'm getting an energy that you already know that. So uh, it's it. you see uh, the eclipse happening here in the sky. So. Again, a lot of like just trusting your intuition, but also eclipses are game changers. So this is a really big thing. And if you are here for a career, if you are here for like, you know, like fame even, right? Uh, because that is your 10th house. This card is attributed to Saturn in Pisces. And uh, that is your 10th house. All right. And you're going to feel Saturn in Pisces all year long. And Saturn really make you work uh, uh, for, for your... Uh, hopes and your witches and and like a finished line uh it is a taskmaster planet but it's almost like a good thing like again i'm getting like whistle while you work energy uh but there is definitely something that you but i would encourage you your life is changing you may have some big decisions to make you're gonna have to leave something behind because something's better for you and it is going to be Absolutely amazing. Remember what I said, 2024 is like a big milestone year for you. And then you, in your external factors, you just caught, got the card of milestones. And so there you go. Come on. And so, yeah. And this can be in any area of your life. Like, I don't know your, like every Gemini is different, right? Every Gemini has a different birth chart. Every Gemini is going to take something different from this reading. This is all about celebration. So you have a lot to celebrate for 2024. And it looks like a lot of y'all may move into a new home, maybe get proposed to, uh, even start dating if that's what you want. This And there's so many dates where you can meet your soulmate in 2024. And that's a weird thing to say, but just wait until I break it down. And I'll let you know. Um, but also uh, celebrating getting a new job, a proposal, but one that's just like dream job, right? Because this card 
card is actually attributed to Aries, just like the Queen of Wands, by the way, just like the Queen of Wands. And so why is that relevant? Again, because the North Node moved into Aries for you particularly, Gemini, that is your 11th house of your hopes and wishes. And so it looks like everything's lining up for you. Everything, I mean, right after the chariot, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's a big thing. And also, uh, well, I mean, if you're not here for hopes and wishes, and I hope that you are, but if you're not here for hopes and wishes, that's still, again, like your 11th house of your social network and groups you belong to, organizations you belong to. So there could be this really nice feeling of some new organiza organization that you get involved with, or maybe you even start. That could be a possibility. Uh, it, having like a really closer uh, uh, group of friends, but also expanding your network as well is a big thing. And getting the Queen of Pentacles is also a big thing. You got two queens here. Queen of Wands, Queen of Pentacles. Queen of uh, Pentacles, this is uh, telling me that uh, one of the biggest priorities for you for 2024 is being able to finally build this world that you want for yourself and having the resources to do so. She is the richest queen. So that's absolutely amazing. Really love this for you. And there's a lot of like growth energy with this card. You can even see the little bunny rabbit in the corner, like representing like that fertility. And, and anyway, uh, there's a maternal side to the queen of pentacles. That I love too. So it's not just you here. This is you building the perfect world for yourself and the people within your world as well and being able to take care of them uh, as well and making sure they're happy and you're going to be happy and you've got the ace of swords and your final outcome so yes you are going to have big change in your life aces usher in new change swords are all about change you're gonna have big change especially up here the way that you see things uh think about things if there are like a lot of you uh and again only because all this activity in your subconscious with you know the 12th house uh that self-sabotage energy a lot of like f uh you know facing fears or whatnot it looks like you're gonna have this huge mental breakthrough that's what the ace of swords really truly is facing a lot of truths uh and that's what you know we're all striving for right being honest with ourselves and uh so and and you see the crown a lot of victory a lot of peace here but change big big change expect big change you're good let's break it down now gemini um here we go we're gonna do january february march i'm gonna highlight the biggest uh, months for you to pay attention to. So January, your transformation already begins. Okay. Because, uh, and I, I'll do this your, for your January forecast, but Mars is moving into Capricorn. Mars loves Capricorn. Mars is exalted in Capricorn. My, this is amazing. And this is your eighth house. So not only is that like a lot of drive and ambition, but the eighth house is transformation. So you're going to start be, you're going to start feeling, remember what I said, Mars, right in the beginning of January. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Um, and also, uh, it, not only your eighth house transformation is other people's resources, shared resources. So inheritance, investments, bonuses, commission, uh, debt, paying off debts, uh, even karmic debts are part of the eighth house. Uh, and, you know, even like your partners, like maybe, uh, doing joint re uh, bank accounts or whatnot. But uh, it all leads up to the new moon in Capricorn on the 11th. One of the I love this new moon, uh, Jupiter and Saturn, super harmonious. Pluto's conjuncting this new moon. It's bringing a lot of power, confidence, like your life starts changing in January. And again, we're going to talk more about this in the January reading. But uh, but Pluto does move into Aquarius on the same day. We move into Aquarius season on the 20th. Again, I'm going to talk more about that later. Uh, but the best day of the month will be January 28th for three reasons. So again, Again, if you want to write this in your calendar, the best day of January or yeah, the best day of January is the 28th. Three reasons. One, Venus trining Jupiter. Best day of the month. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is Venus, a planet of love and money and romance and creativity and, you know, beauty and, and, and whatnot. And then Jupiter, the planet of good fortune. Good luck. So this is great for first dates. If you are single, this is where things can start rolling, kicking off like leading to like a second date and the third it's, it's such an auspicious aspects but aspect but uh what makes it really great is that the same day mercury will try in uranus 
This is absolutely amazing, especially for you. Remember, Mercury is your ruling planet, Gemini. Mercury is your ruling planet, and Mercury is no longer retrograde. So Mercury trining Uranus, the, the planet of breakthroughs innovation and also surprises so you could find some like surprising things happen around this time the same day that venus trans jupiter this is absolutely amazing again this is you know can be like being at the right, right place at the right time type of day uh but again mark it in your calendar third reason why january 28th is the best best day of the month is because it is my birthday now to february um february i really really love the main thing that I want you to know is on February 13th, that's right, if you live in the U.S., uh, Canada, it's a, balance, a day before Valentine's Day, Mars is going to conjunct Pluto. This is two really powerful planets getting together. So there could be a sense of you like not only like amped up with like really high energy, like you are like in it to win it, but it's also like my way or the highway energy. So this is really big. Um, so that is something that I want you to uh, mark. There are also, uh, I really love the February 21st when Venus conjunct Mars. You know what happens when Venus and Mars gets together. Again, really amazing day. And I really want you to take advantage of this. Um, and then one day that I really love is February 28th. This, you know, the 13th, by the way, Mars conjuncting Pluto that's how you use it. Use it to your advantage. Use it to make sure that you feel empowered, okay? Because they are two very powerful planets. So this is one of the best days. And then the 28th, not only with the sun conjunct Mercury, Mercury's conjuncting Saturn, the sun is conjuncting Saturn. This is like a triple threat of a day of, it can be like hard because it's Saturn, but it's also a day where you just like, you can be like this force to be reckoned with. And so again, empowerment energy, but also with all this activity with Saturn, Mercury being your ruling planet, Saturn being in your 10th house of career, a lot of movement in career could happen around here. All right. So March. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. So um, on March 1st, so we're officially in Pisces season. Now the sun is going to sextile Jupiter on March 1st. Mark this in your calendar. Best day of the month. Okay. Sun sex on Jupiter. You can, you know, this is a day where I've been saying like, you can like at this point start getting like hints of like what's going to start happening in your future. Uh, it's especially like um, career related. It, it, you, you may start getting like little hints, like the, the, you know, golden path that's opening up for you. Um, so I really, really, really love this day. We also have on the 11th is when Venus enters Pisces. So we're in Pisces season now. Venus is entering Pisces. Venus is exalted in Pisces. Again, Saturn and Neptune are also in Pisces. A lot, if you are here for career, fame. I mean, some of y'all could become the next Angelina Jolie. But again, this is just like, I mean, this is great. So this is, you know, Venus will be in Pisces for a while, but one of the biggest things that I want you to know is, uh, oh, and then Mars moves into Pisces on the 22nd. I mean, like, ah, so much happening in Pisces. But one thing that I want you to know uh, as Gemini is March 25th, that's when we have the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. So at this time, uh, there is something, I can see a lot of y'all leaving jobs to get new jobs or leaving jobs to start your own business, leaving jobs to start a career, maybe joining another organization. There's so many possibilities here, uh, but this is, remember, lunar eclipses are really more about completion, right? And eclipses, things can be eclipsed out of your life, but this is coming right after Venus sex on Jupiter the day before. So it's actually kind of, it's, it's, nice but we'll obviously talk more about this in march okay so uh and then on the 28th again if you are single or it doesn't even matter if you're single venus is sex telling uranus you could meet your soulmate around this time you better be like swiping right on tinder until your thumb falls off you better be going out to the bars to the observatories to the you know uh to to the pet stores where i don't know where wherever people meet singles um if you are in a relationship, this is also like maybe you're doing something together that's really nice or ascending your relationship in another level. But again, 
if you're single, especially if you're single, you better, better take action. If you don't, I am sending you to Exile Island. All right. Until you until you do fire up your hinge or whatever app um, or, you know, meet an island person. Anyway, uh, let's see what's going on for you for January, February and March. Oh, wow. You got the three of swords, the sun, king of wands. You're good. Well, the three of swords, obviously, you're going to have a moment where there's going to be something. Uh, it seems more like stressful to you, but it's more of like stressful as in like, you know, things are changing and you're going to have to make big decisions. OK, and it can be a little bit like, you know, heartbreaking. Uh, you know, I always say that, you know, when this card comes up, but look, it's coming up with a sun and the king of wands. And so it can be a lot of you being in your head again. Remember, even though it's considered like the heartbreak card. It's still a sword suit. It's up here. It's up here. And you're Gemini's. And you tend to be in your head a lot. So it is that time to like, remember, I said a lot of purging, a lot of removing things, a lot of letting things go. And some of it may be hard for you, but look at where it leads. The sun. If you've ever gotten tarot reading, you know this is the biggest yes. This. Okay. So let me just tell you how significant this is, is for January, February, March. Not only did you get the sun, which remember, I pointed out the sunflowers. And the Queen of Wands, who's in the heart of your spread, that appear here in the Sun card. You got the King of Wands. You got the pair. You're good. You're good. <laughs> You're really good. Uh, you're moving into this more auspicious, uh, like 2024 is just going to be absolutely amazing for you. You know, the sun is like opportunity, abundance, a lot of freedom. Uh, you know, you see the wisdom child, naked wisdom child, like a, in, almost like a rebirth energy, new, fresh energy happening uh, that that with the sun. OK, it's it's a lot of sunlight. Now, uh, let's get to it. Let's see what's going on for April, May and June. So April. Oh, so many things happening. Um, April 1st, Mercury will go retrograde in Aries. Uh, it will go retrograde until um, August 2026. Just kidding. April Fool's. Um, the biggest thing that's actually happening on April, this is, again, one of the biggest months. April 8th, new moon, total solar eclipse in Aries. Again, in your 11th house of your hopes and wishes. These solar eclipses, you better manifest until, you know, set intentions, plant seeds. This is such a good eclipse. Uh, I love that Mars is actually sextiling Jupiter and Uranus. I mean, this is... You have to mark this in your calendar. Now, why is this such a big deal? Because um, what's happening is, okay, that's happening on the 8th. On the 19th, when we move into Taurus season in April, the same day on the 19th, Mercury conjuncting Venus, Mars sextiling Jupiter, Mars sextiling Uranus as well. Uh, so you can already see that this day is just a glorious day. This is one of the best days, but it's not the best day of the month. We're getting to the 20th, the day after that happens. That's when we have the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus. And so this is rare, 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 rare. Only happens every, th every 13 years, every 13 years. Okay. Uh, so again, one of the bit, like, you're just going to see a lot of breakthroughs, a lot of changes happening in your life. Uh, you moving in a lot in, in, in a big, a new direction. Um, this, I mean, like, this is, this is absolutely amazing. Um, so mark that in your calendar. And so what I also love is, um, on April 28th, Venus is moving into Taurus and it's domicile. Venus is ruling planet for Taurus. And then the day after Mars is moving into Aries in its domicile. So this is like you, I mean, like just buckle your seatbelt. I mean, this is like, you're just, come on. This is going to be, it's like, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, it, like Vin Diesel walking away from like an explosion, like in aviator sunglasses, like really cool and like whatnot. That's you right now. That's you now may, um, 
Oh, I love May 7th, okay? This is going to be very interesting for you. This is going to be very interesting for you because it's the new moon in Taurus. Now, remember, it's all in your 12th house, so I feel like there's going to be big breakthroughs. Again, a lot of you leaving things uh, 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 behind, especially if there is any sort of ener like low energy frequencies. I feel like this is going to be really amazing for you. I mean... It really, I mean, it's coming right after the sun sextiling Saturn. So I love this new moon in Taurus because Venus, Uranus, sun, the moon, Jupiter, Neptune, I mean, like Saturn, they're all in great alignment. So mark that one down. But that is not the best day of the year. The best day of the year, or I'm sorry, of the month of May, the best day of May is May 18th. This is when the sun conjuncts Jupiter. This is a Kazemi. This is the luckiest day of the year. Yes, I said luckiest day. So use that to your advantage. Use this to your advantage. All right. So uh, Gemini, we officially move into your birthday season on the 20th. Happy birthday. Um, I really actually love the 22nd when the sun, which is in your sign at this time, is trining Pluto, which is in Aquarius. So this is double air. I, I, I really love this day for you. I'd love for you to make it. It's a big day for like money. Okay. Big day for money and communication. Um, and then on the 23rd, in my opinion, this is one of the best full moons. Uh, I think this is the best full moon of the year. It's a full moon in Sagittarius. Now, if you are watching this video right now in December when I'm releasing it, remember, we had that new moon in Sagittarius, December 12th. And so this is kind of like that culmination of what's happening uh, six months after the new moon. So this full moon in Sagittarius, let me just tell you what's happening and why this is really important for you, Gemini. Venus is moving into your sign. And then we have Venus conjuncting Jupiter. And then we have Venus also sextiling Neptune. And then we have Jupiter sextiling Neptune. I love it. I love it. And now you remember how this is May 23rd. Now May 25th. This is the best day of the year for you. In like you. This is when Jupiter fully goes into your sign until uh, June. Is it June 2025? 2025. 2025. So you have the planet of good luck, good fortune, prosperity, all of that, all of that in your sign. Okay. So you're going to have the luckiest year. I mean, like your, your life is starting to change because you see all these incredible days that are happening. And I'm only pointing out the like really big ones that you as a Gemini should pay attention to. Um, this is, uh, so that's really big. And then obviously, and then, uh, June, we move into June. I want you to mark down June 2nd when Jupiter trines Pluto. This is the biggest money day of the year. This is where you could make just like, right? This is it. This is it. Jupiter trining Pluto. So mark this down. Big day with a lot of success around finances and money. Obviously, you have to take action with you can't just sit around and but this is uh, yeah, you're going to just I feel like everything is um, gearing up to uh, for y'all. And then, you know, the day after Mercury enters your sign. So uh, again, you know, the sun is in your sign at this time. Mercury is conjuncting Jupiter on the fourth. And this is one day that I want you to know. Uh, uh, is like your day. Okay. Because remember Mercury's in your sign, Jupiter's in your sign. Um, on the same day on June 4th, uh, Mercury's also going to try and Pluto while the sun conjuncts, uh, Venus. <laughs> and so I can't, can you even believe it? This is uh, okay. So break it down. We have the sun in your sign and we have Mercury in your sign. We have Venus in your sign. We have maybe like, this is your week, basically. Um, so uh, really great day for like con signing contracts or a good time to uh, sign contracts. A lot of big things happening. But again, the fourth is the best day of the month for you. The other best day of the month for you is on June 6th when we have a new moon in your sign. Okay, Gemini. So uh, you have to remember at this time, I mean, the new moon, the sun, Mercury, Venus and Jupiter in your sign. And they remember Jupiter's uh, training Pluto. So hello. Talk about life changing. Okay. Talk about life changing. Now, remember how I said the first six months of 2024 are significantly better than the last six months. Well, we start feeling it around the eighth when Mars moves into Taurus. And so it's like 
that's when you start feeling a little bit of like a little bit of a slowdown. And then you, it's, I actually kind of like it for you because remember Taurus is your 12th house. So it's giving you like, there's so much intense, like auspicious stuff, like, like back to back that's happening for you. It's like really nice for you to just kind of like take a step back. <laughs> um, and think about uh, a couple things, but uh, there are a couple squares in June as well. Later in June, um, one thing that I do love for you uh, is on the twenty sixth. So mark this down. Actually, mark down the twenty first. We have a full moon in Cancer. Okay, so we're in June, uh, and again, uh, that is your second half salary, income, money. But then the day after. Uh, well, no, on the 26th, I'm sorry, Mercury trines Saturn. And so it's almost like this is a really big month of contracts. And this is also a really good time to sign a contract. This is when there could be like a lot of you like starting like this brand, huge brand new cycle in your life and letting things go and letting things go that, you know, maybe a little bit challenging and you're not ready to, but come on, you got the sun, you got the king of ones, you got the queen of ones. Uh, you have all these great aspects. So let's see what's going on for you for April, May and June. And you're good so remember how i said uh your life starts changing around this time well there you go you got the magician you got three of wands all about change and then there you go ten of pentacles you're good you're absolutely good what more could you ask for you got the magician the power to manifest whatever you want you're gonna have so much power so much luck you're i mean i you, the only per, one of two people that have the infinity symbol over their heads right in tarot and so he also has all tools to tarot at its disposal so remember i said you have to like take action well the magician is a card of action but hey you can direct that energy wherever you want you i mean is it money is it uh, confidence is it uh, you know love relationships anything you want you've got that power and then the three of wands it's like go 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 you're ready to just go out there three is like the birth of new things creation and also this card is actually attributed to sun in Aries you're getting all these Aries cards rich let me remind you the north node your destiny your true calling is in Aries all year long and that is your 11th house of your hopes and wishes, but also your social net, social network. And keep in mind that is there's a reason why they're both in the eleventh house. Okay, it is you know if you think back to traditional astrology, like we're going back to ancient ancient astrology, it's the people that you know, the people within your circle that make your wishes and and hopes come true. Right. So keep that in mind. But Gemini's y'all are so social anyway. And then there you go, Ten of Pentacles. I mean, this is your kingdom come. This is the you made it card. You see it's raining pentacles, money and wealth in the form of the tree of life. You see the happy family. Uh, three generations at play here, actually. Um, it's, this is true cycles of life. This is prosperity, success. You see the abundance here, the harvest. You see how big their castle is. A uh, lot of legacy energy here. A lot of uh, family energy, too, uh, if that's a, a, a matter for you. But uh, inheritance as well is highly associated with this card. Now, let's move on to uh, July, August, September. Now, July, the biggest, oh my goodness, for you, Gemini. And again, if you do not do this, I'm going to send you to Exile Island until you do it. July 5th, mark this in your calendar. We have a new moon in Cancer. This is in your second house of money salary. So remember new moons, new beginnings, new opportunities, new paths. Now, uh, Mars is extremely harmonious Like at this time, uh, not only with the moon, but with like the sun and Venus, like all in Cancer at this point. This is... Uh, one of the best days this is actually the best day for you of the month okay so again huge 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 uh the other best day is the 15th mars is going to conjunct uranus now this may be a challenging day it's again how you use this energy and how you're on top of remember uh this is kind of like rebellious energy too remember what i said my way or the highway like a lot of empowerment so you can use this day to your advantage and there's going to be a couple of these where it's like okay am i going to be uh in a situation where i'm just like oh, i don't know or am i going to 
own it, right? You're going to own it. You're going to own it. So mark those days. Those are the best days for you. Now in August, um, the best day of the month, uh, obvious, well, obviously, <laughs> uh, is the seventh when uh, the sun is going to sextile Jupiter. Again, this is just a very nice auspicious aspect. But what makes it really great is that Mercury is going to conjunct Venus. And so I actually really like this. Um Mercury is retrograde at this time. Mercury will be retrograde in Virgo. Mercury's uh, and Mercury's in its domicile in Virgo. So Mercury not only rules your plan, you, but also Virgo. So it can be. I mean, the way that I see it for you is like you reconnecting with people from the past uh, to get like really good things, um, like to your benefit. And now on the fourteenth, Mars is going to conjunct Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter's in your sign. Oh, this is like taking action for like all this expansion in fortune and wealth and prosperity in your life. And remember, one other thing I want you to know, and this is I'm going to talk more about this in 2024. You are the twin. And so a lot of these aspects, it's like two options. It's it's with Jupiter in your sign. And so I absolutely uh, love that for you. Um on the 19th, this is when I want you to be on guard. This is when Jupiter squares Saturn. Uh, and this is happening while Mercury and Saturn are retrograde. So this is just like, again, one of those challenging aspects that we'll see a couple times. And we'll talk about it when it comes up in August. But uh, there's just like, just be aware around this time if you want to mark that down on a day of like being aware. Now, uh, when we get to... Uh, September, October, this is when, um, oh wait, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Okay. So when we start getting to September, this is when like the planet starts, uh, retrograding. And then we start having like oppositions that are really, uh, challenging and, and squares that are really challenging. But the best day of the month is the 14th, September 14th, Venus shining Jupiter. This is all about love, money, sex, uh, beauty. Remember Jupiter's in your sign. Uh, and then on the 17th, we have the full moon, uh, lunar eclipse in Pisces. Uh, Saturn is going to be conjuncting the full moon and Saturn brings out like longevity energy that like, uh, stability. Okay. Pluto, Uranus are, they're in good alignment right now. Um, you know, to Neptune, as well as the sun and the full moon. So I do like this eclipse, but again, uh, lunar eclipses are more about like letting things go. Uh, and then, uh, on the 19th, one of the best, uh, the second best day of the month, the sun shining Uranus. It's just like, again, one of those days where you could just have surprising breakthroughs, surprising breakthroughs that are really nice. Uh, oh my gosh, there are so many other right days, but those are the main ones for you. Okay. So Gemini, let's see what's going on for you for July, August, and September. Oh my gosh. You got the seven of swords, ace of cups, the hanged man. So uh, what's really happening here is this is a time where, again, it feels like more like be honest with yourself about everything at this point. Be really honest with yourself, especially when things are going retrograde, especially when uh, it, uh, you have a lot of options and opportunities coming up. There could be also a sense where you are just being like you're beating the game because there again, there are some challenging aspects and it's almost like you're coming out on top. Remember, I said it's how you maneuver. It's the actions that you take to feel empowered. Now, there's also around this time where you could discover like people are doing like weird things to you. I'm getting more of like something from the past, um, especially pay attention to that retrograde period, which uh, is starts on April. F I'm sorry, August fourth okay uh for for about two two and a half three weeks uh but it really is the bigger energy is like now i have to be honest with myself with a lot of things and that is going to bring everything for you you got the ace of cups this is i mean come on you got the, your second ace here and the ace of cups is we we call it like the heart of tarot like the holy grail like this is the card you want to show you want showing up in your spread and so the uh, birth of new things, that's going to bring this emotional fulfillment that is on this nirvanic level. Like when I say auspicious, this is rapturous, intense joy and pleasure. This is like 
tears of joy, happiness. Okay. Uh, so there's something new happening in your life. That's going to be really amazing. And then you get the hangman, which is absolutely amazing. So I see a lot of y'all like really ascending in your career and the passions that you have as well. Uh, I see a lot of, uh, this is a big year of personal growth and spiritual growth, like I said earlier as well. And you have the hangman now to affirm that. Okay. Uh, again, another card telling surrender things. Remember, we do have that lunar eclipse in Pisces. Uh, and funny enough, hangman attributed to Neptune and Neptune is in Pisces. So there you go. There's all the everything that's happening. Uh, but this is a card where you can see a lot of enlightenment around his head, the halo around his head, the smile on his face. So getting ready for this big transfer, another big transformation happening in your life around this time. That is like really, really good. Like I like can't even. Um, but there is a sense of like surrender, like sacri making sacrifices to let things go that no longer serve you well. You see that happening here with the eight of cups. You see that happening with the chariot. You see that here in the five of cups. So a lot of, again, just letting things go. Now, uh, the last three months, this is, uh, okay, so October, we have the really big, October 2nd, really big new moon, solar eclipse in Libra. Uh, Venus is actually conjuncting Uranus at this time. You could get really amazing, exciting news around this time. Um, so this is the... Uh, one of the best days. I'm going to say it's one of the best days. It's obviously one of the most important days of the year, but one of the best days of October. The other thing that I love on the fourth Venus training Saturn for you, this is like where you can meet your soulmate. If you're single, this is where you can meet, you know, I get something with career as well. Remember Saturn uh, being in Pisces, but also like fame, like this is like really big really really big because there are days after it that are just as sweet and just as nice with venus um so really love this now on october 9th for you jupiter which is in your sign starts going retrograde okay and so it's really good time to like really think about like your belief system that is going to be a big thing for you with uh, Pluto and Aquarius in your ninth house anyway. Uh, but you're going to start feeling, you know, Jupiter is only operating at like, you know, 60% rather than 100%. And it will go direct again in 2025 in February. All right. But you are uh, still getting all that luck. And then on the 13th, Sun trining Jupiter. Best day of the month. Okay. Best day of the month. Uh, the only Sun trine Jupiter will have uh, uh, in 2024. So with that said, those are the days that I really want you to pay attention to. Okay. Uh, November, uh, what I love is November 1st. So not mark that down. We have a new moon in Scorpio. Um, at this time, Mars will be in cancer. Neptune will be in Pisces. Mercury will be in Scorpio. This is what we call like a golden, tri like a golden triangle. It's all in water placements but i i do love this new moon in scorpio and again uh this for you is your sixth house so this would be everyday activities work mostly like the process of work like labor like hiring employees and stuff like that but it's also health it's also pets you could get a pet at this point um but i also love november 4th this is um where the, so November 4th, the sun trines Saturn. So this is a date where I am like begging you to start something new, to plant some seeds, to give some longevity to something. And again, this is the best day. You have to do it. Um, if you don't, I'm sending you to Exile Island until you do. Okay. Uh, this is again, just marketing your calendar. Great day. Uh, and then in there's again, obviously a lot of great things, uh, happening, uh, in November, uh, Pluto went back into Capricorn for a little bit. And so November 19th is when it fully goes back into Aquarius for, uh, 20 years until January, 2044. Again, really big thing. What, I mean, huge tech revolution happening really really big thing let's we'll we'll talk about it later uh and then i love november 27th it's just the sun shining mars you're just gonna feel alive i love this day um and then december uh it's when mars goes retrograde so this is like that slow down period okay so that's gonna happen on december 6th um there is 
on the 15th, December 15th, we do have a full moon in your sign, okay? It's conjuncting Jupiter, <laughs> so which is in your sign. And so Mars and, and, and Mercury, your ruling planet, great alignment. I like it. So I like this full moon. I like this full moon. Uh, let's see what's going on for you, okay? Let's say a four, oh, uh, should we take that? I'm going to leave it out as a clarifier. Um, let's see what's going on for you for October, November, and December. Okay. You're good. Um, there you go. You got the full. Uh, what can I say? What can I say? Your life is changing, constantly changing. It seems like there's a lot of different cycles that will be happening within this one long, you know, Jupiter in Gemini cycle. And so there will be another cycle that you're going through with the full here. And this is you've got the full abundance of the sun uh, and then you have the moon. So, uh, again, there may be some emotional moments. Remember, I said the last half of uh, of the year of 2024, a little bit more like eh, like with the retrogrades and again there's a lot of squares and oppositions that we want to keep an eye out for but it really is just like trusting your intuition at this point really trust your intuition especially when it does come to career because the moon in tarot is ruled by pisces okay remember that is your 10 thoughts of career fame public recognition honors achievements leadership social status all of that just think if if you're not here for career just your passions but even still on just a, a main level, like the, the moon is just like, uh, trust your intuition. Okay. Really trust it. And it seems like you will. And it seems like you're going to come out on top. Very influential. Uh, you have, uh, and spiritually, like a lot more intuitive, a lot more connected spiritually. You did get the hair fun. Okay. So there you go. He's a big leader. He's very wise. He has his deep sacred knowledge. You can see the keys at his feet. Uh, like you are absolutely good. You're absolutely good here. This is amazing. And then you did this one fell out the five of swords. So again, the last three months are definitely like the most like there are some squares and oppositions that I want you particularly to watch out for. So there could be something where you have to just like something may like really frustrate you and you just have to like be cool with it. Be like, why is this? Why am I getting worked up from this when everything in my life is so good so there could be a moment where uh especially there are some squares again there are some squares that are going to affect you throughout october uh and even november there's you know the sun opposite uranus is not like that great because it is happening on the day that saturn goes direct because you know saturn had gone retrograde but um it's it's happening at a time where there's like a chock full of like activity that's just like whoa so much happening so anyway uh just know just hey you may have some moments where you're like do i even need to draw my swords like i'm i'm so gemini's are so quick-witted uh so, and you got jupiter in your sign like you don't need to like fall into those moments right because look how amazing everything is so to wrap it up you're good you're good you're good you're good you're good uh you're absolutely good here you got the pair the queen of wands and the king of wands. You got the sun with the magician. You got two aces here, ace of cups, um, ace of swords. You got the fool. I mean, like, I can't even, like, this is going to be, you got the card of milestones. You have um, the ten of pentacles. I, like, I don't even know what to say. Like, you're, I mean, the hair font, you're so good here. Um, I can't even believe this. Uh, there's, again, this, it feels like there's going to be like cycles within cycles, but like auspicious ones that are happening throughout the year. So anyway, Gemini, with that said, you're going to have an amazing year. I'm very excited for you. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you uh, next week.